Um, today we're going to talk about um, just the basic overview of using Instructure Canvas, which is the learning management system that we're piloting here on campus. Um, the first pilot semester was this past summer. Um, we're piloting it this fall, and you can also sign up to use Canvas for this spring semester as well. If you all have questions as we go along, feel free to either push your, your talk button or just um, type something in the chat window to, to let me know you have a question or if I need to review or go back over anything. So I will go ahead and get started. Um, for Canvas, all of your users, whether it's your, your, you as an instructor, your teaching assistant, or your students, you should all take your browser and go to courses.missouri.edu to access Canvas. So you'll click on the Canvas link and it will take you to a page where you'll log in with your paw print ID and password. Notice underneath here that there's also links to student help and instructor help. And this is going to take you out to the, um, the vendor's help documents. Instructors who want to request a site to teach, um, teach with their course, you can click on the Request Course Site link and you'll log in with your paw print ID and password. And you have to be listed as the instructor of record in the MyZoo schedule of courses for this form to work. If you're not listed as the MyZoo schedule of, in the MyZoo schedule of courses, you will need to work with your, the person in your department who schedules classes so that they show up in MyZoo. Um, and then your name will appear next to that course so you can request a site to go along with it. This form is very similar to the one that you would use if you requested a form to use for Blackboard. Okay. So after you've logged in, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, switch my tab here because I've already logged in with a guest access account. Once you've logged in with your paw print ID and password, you'll be taken to the front page of Canvas. And this is what's known as the user dashboard. Um, for someone who has just logged in, they'll see any announcements that the system administrator has posted. Um, there's a new feature that's available in Canvas now called Canvas Commons. Um, and this announcement will appear um, to every user until they've actually escaped this announcement and then it won't appear anymore. So I'm going to click X to make that announcement go away. And now I'm looking at my user dashboard. And each of the classes that I'm enrolled in as either an instructor or a student are appearing in these tiles. Whoops, I didn't mean to click. Hold on. You can also switch um, your toggle view to a course ac activity stream, which is very similar to a social media stream where you can see the recent activity that's been going on in your classes. On the left-hand side is the global navigation menu. In here, you'll also have a link to see the courses that you're enrolled in. Um, the calendar, this is the calendar that is across all of the courses that you're enrolled in. The inbox is the email tool. And this inbox um, is actually also across all of the courses that you're enrolled in. Commons is the new feature that we just saw the, the um, alert about. And this is an area that is, um, it has learning object and um, open educational resources in it that you can choose to import into any of your sites. This is my personal profile information. And then this is the link to MU Connect, which is our student um, success initiative tool that you can use. So I'm going to go back over here to the calendar tool, and I'll show you how this looks. Like I said, this is how um, all of the calendar items across all of the, the courses that you're enrolled in, this is what the calendar looks like. Um, what's different with this compared to Blackboard is that the calendar tool in Blackboard is can be located inside of each site. In Canvas, it's located at the global level, so you can see everything across all of your sites here. On the right-hand side, these are the list of the classes that I'm enrolled in. And I can actually choose to turn these on or off. 
I can also click on the calendar feed, and if I have another calendar that I would prefer to check all of my information in, um, let's say that I actually use um, Google Calendar or an Outlook Calendar, I can copy this website address and I can feed it into the software that I use for my own calendaring and all of the calendar events that are in each of these course sites will feed into the calendar that I use. So I'll go over here to the inbox And here are the courses that I'm enrolled in. And if I had any messages, they would appear here across all of the, the courses that I'm enrolled in. To compose a message, I can just um, click on the compose message icon. And then I select the course that I want to send the message to. And then I can choose the recipients. Um, some of the shortcuts in here are that I can send it to everyone in that's enrolled in the site, just the teachers just the students or just the TAs. Um, there is the option to attach files. There's also an option, an option to create um, a video recording and have that video recording sent to the student or the, the other user in the email. In the account area is where you can set up your personal profile information. You can also set up the notifications for how you want to receive um, notices about any of the activity that's going on in your site. So if you click on profile, if you have an avatar or a profile photo that you would like to add and have that show up, um, you can click on the pencil tool here and add your photo. You can also over here select other ways that you would like to receive notifications. So by default, the email address that is going to be loaded into Canvas is going to be your official Mizzou email, email address. You can also add other email addresses. You can also add other contact methods. For example, if I would prefer to receive text messages about activity that's going on inside of my Canvas site, I can add my phone number and receive text messages as well. Other options that you can add could also be, um, for example, a Twitter account if you wanted to get direct tweets. You could do that as well as part of a notification. Hi, did somebody have a question? Did someone join? Okay. I'm going to go down to the notifications area and show you the different areas um, that you can set up. So for example, um, these are the default settings here, but you can turn all of these off. You can turn them all on. And you can also choose how frequently you'd like to receive these notifications. So for example, in regard to due date activities, if you would prefer um, to get this information right away, if there happens to be a change to a due date, I can change this here. So that now you see it says ASAP. Some of the things that you can change um, <clears throat> also include things like the discussion board, late grading. Students probably want to know um, exactly when something has been graded. If you as the instructor get something that's been submitted late, you can also get notification that a student has submitted something past the due date or you can choose to turn any of these off. Any questions about anything that I've covered so far? Okay, I'm going to jump into the courses then. So in Canvas, um, this is your, the home page for your course. Your navigation menu is going to be on your left hand side. Your global navigation always stays to the far left. 
if you happen to be on a browser where um, the window is smaller, the course navigation will actually collapse to, to these three icons that you see here at the top. So if you don't see your course navigation icons, you can actually just click here to have that pop up or click again to collapse it. And that all just depends on how wide the browser is that you're using. Okay. So your home page, um, in, in, as a comparison to Blackboard, by default in Blackboard, your home page is your announcements section. You have a home page in Canvas as well. And to choose what home page you want, you'll click on the Choose Home Page button that's over here on the right. Um, and here's a list of the options that you have for what can be your home page. Notice that Announcements is not an option for your home page here. So that's a key difference between Blackboard and Canvas. You can choose to have a course activity stream, uh, which is going to be a page um, that's going to be very similar to what you saw as the course activity stream on the main landing page. This will just be specific to this class. Um, you can set a specific um, page that you create inside of Canvas to be your home page. Um, your course modules is very similar to um, one of the content area buttons in Blackboard that you might have, like a course documents button or a button that says um, lesson materials or maybe another button that says reading. You can set this button to be the, the landing page. You can have it the assignments list or the syllabus. Okay. Over here on this left hand side, you'll see some of these navigation buttons are darker black and then others are light gray. The ones that are dark black are the ones that are visible to the students. The navigation buttons that you see but they're grayed out, those are um, hidden from the students. Only you as the instructor or the TA can see these. The Canvas navigation menu, um, you can reorder the, the navigation buttons. You can hide navigation buttons, um, but you cannot rename the buttons and you cannot very easily um, add new navigation buttons to the menu. So if you need to make changes to the navigation area, you'll click on the settings area. And then when the page loads, we're going to go to the navigation tab. So these items that are here at the top are the buttons that are visible to students. The ones that are further down are the ones that are invisible, but you should be able to get to them as the instructor. So if I need to hide anything, I can simply click and drag any of these items down to the bottom that I'm not going to use. If I need to reorder anything, I can do that by just simply clicking on something and dragging it up and down. If you happen to be um, accessing Canvas on a touch screen device, like a smartphone or a tablet where you can't do a drag and drop, you can also click on the down arrows over here and click move to reorder or disable to move this item down to the bottom where it would be grayed out. After you've made these changes, you'll click the save button on the bottom. And then you'll see that these have gone away. Okay. Now I said that it's not easy to add additional buttons. Um, and that's because natively, Canvas does not want you to add more buttons. They actually want the student experience across all of the sites to be very consistent. So they would prefer that all of the buttons be the same name, that all of the same buttons be available across all of the sites. However, we've added an app to Canvas that will allow you to add in additional buttons. And um, that app is called the Redirect Tool. And if you need to do that, um, notice that I'm still on the settings page, and I'm going to click on the apps tab here just to switch the tab. So these are um, some of the external apps that we have um, allowed for you to add on to your Canvas site. And if you need to add on an, an additional button to your navigation, 
this is your redirect tool to do that. So if I need to do that, I click on that, click Add App. Here is where you change redirect tool and give this the name for the button that you want to show up in your navigation menu. So if I wanted to provide a link um, to the Mizzou homepage, for example, I can do this. Choose where you want this to show up and click Add App. If you don't see it show up um, automatically, we'll click the, the Reload button and now you'll see that that link shows up in my navigation. So if I needed to reorder this, I could come back to the navigation menu and then I could position this in the navigation list where I needed it to be. Okay, and now you see that it's up here. Any questions so far on just editing the navigation menu? Okay, I'm going to continue on. Everyone just stop me. Anyone stop me if you have any questions. So also in your course, there is the announcement section. Like I said, you just can't set it as your home page. So to go to your announcement section, you can add um, new announcements here. You can also um, take in RSS feeds if you want information from other social media sites, from other news sites or special interest sites. If those sites have an RSS feed, you can have those feed into the announcements area for your students to view. Um, but as far as creating announcements, we'll just click the Add Announcement button. And this page is very similar to what you would find if you were teaching in Blackboard. Um, title. Here's your description area. Notice that on the, the right-hand side here, if you are in your description, if you are providing um, links to resources that you've provided in the site, or if you want to provide your students with a shortcut to a quiz that you've created. Notice that all of those resources are available over here in this right-hand column. So for example, um, let's just say that this is more of a reminder that there's an assignment that is due. I could actually provide them um, a direct link to go to that assignment from right here. I can very easily just click on that, puts in the text, and it provides a link that takes them directly to it. Also, if I had other files that I needed to attach, I could do that here. I could set my post so that it um, posts at a time in the future. You can also enable um, people to respond to your announcements if you want. This is one way that people um, will use the announcement tool more like a blog tool. So I can save this. And here's my announcement. I'll move on to the syllabus tool. So the syllabus, there's two parts to it. Um, the information that you would include in your syllabus, there is a description area. But underneath the syllabus is going to be an area that is populated automatically by all of the assignments, 
um, anything that's graded, assignments, quizzes, graded discussion boards, anything like that, and whatever due date you assign to them, those are going to be populated in this list down here automatically as you're adding that information to your Canvas site. So to edit the information that's up here in the top, we'll click the Edit Syllabus Description area, and we'll go to a page where um, the description, you can enter this information, just like you would in, a, in any type of WYSIWYG editor, and then just click Update Syllabus. But this information down here is going to be populated for you automatically. So since I mentioned that, I'm going to go on over to Assignments, and we'll add some, some assignments in here. Now, as you add assignments, quizzes, or graded discussion boards, that information is going to automatically create columns for you in the Grade Center. Um, and unlike the, the Blackboard Grade Center, in Canvas, you cannot add individual columns directly to the Grade Center. The only way that things get added to the Grade Center is by adding assignments, quizzes, or anything that is graded. So to add an assignment, we'll click here. And you have a few different ways that an assignment um, can be tracked or how it can be submitted inside of Canvas. So let's just say um, if this is a, a paper assignment, you can put in the information here. Points are required. The assignment group is the category in which it's going to be tracked. And this is useful, um, especially if you're going to be using a weighted grading scheme because you can assign, um, have assignments be worth 50% of the total grade, quizzes be worth 20% and, and so on and so forth. So you'll assign that to a group. Points is how you want it to display in the Grade Center for you and for the students, and these are the different options that you have. Um, if this is something that you just want to track but you don't want it to um, calculate towards the, the final grade, you can have it be not graded. And here are the different submission types that are available. Um, if you want the students to submit a file to you through Canvas, you can um, have the submission type online. If it's something that's going to be taking place in class and the students aren't going to um, be turning anything in, maybe it's um, tracking class participation, you can set it as no submission. Um, if they're going to hand it in in class, on paper, or external tool is um, a way that they could connect to something like Turnitin, um, VoiceThread, one of the other external tools that we have connected inside of Canvas. The, the tools that we have connected inside of Blackboard, you can expect to have those tools in Canvas as well. So if you are using VoiceThread, Kaltura, Turnitin, Collaborate, any of those tools are also available inside of Canvas, and you can get to those using the external tool. If they're going to be submitting something online, you can have them um, give them the option to submit in different types of ways, and you can even restrict file, file types. So if you want them to um, only submit PDF files and not Microsoft Word documents, you can actually um, do this by typing in the file extension here. Okay. Canvas does support group work, so if you have group assignments, you can do that. If you would like um, students to do peer review, that's an option as well. Here's where you can select where this information um, is delivered to. So if you are use if you have sections in your class, let's say a section of undergraduate students and a section of graduate students, you can have um, additional assignments or additional projects that you can assign just to your graduate students if you like. And that assignment that you create won't be visible to your students, and it also won't calculate toward your students' total grade. It'll only calculate toward your graduate students. So your due date, um, you sign this here, and this is actually information that that syllabus list will generate for you. So if I set 
that this is due, let's see, January 15th. Note the time at the end of the day, but if I want to change that to 5 o'clock, I can. So this is the due date, but then I can also set when the link is available to the students. This is also a feature that's available inside of Blackboard. You may have used this before. I can set this so that the link is available to students um, beginning, I'll say, beginning Monday, and it's available all the way up until the assignment is due. You have the option to just save this information if you're not finished with it and come back to it later, or you can save and publish. I'm going to click Save because I want to point out um, the way that these look to you if they have not been published. Okay, so here's the information. If I go back to the assignments list, you'll see here that this is the micro theme. And notice over here in the right-hand column, I have these green um, clouds, and this one's gray. This is your visual indicator that this is not visible to the student. So if you're expecting your students to complete this, you have to click on this cloud to publish it. And then if you need to unpublish it, it's just as simple as taking it back off. You'll note here that I've got a weighted grading schema set up. You can see that my assignments are worth 70% of my total. My quizzes are worth 10, exams are worth 20, um, and then I have imported assignments that's just kind of a miscellaneous. But if, I, if you need to set this up, that is done by clicking on the settings icon that is over here on the far right, and you'll check the box here that says the weight final grade based on assignment groups, and then you'll put in your percentages that will total up to 100. And since I've added this micro theme, I'm going to go back to my syllabus just to show you how that is auto-populated in my assignment. So you'll see that here. Here's the, um, the date that it's due, the time that it's due, and as a student, I can just click right here to go directly to that. What I'll also point out is in addition to that being populated automatically in the syllabus, it's also in my calendar now. So if I come over here to January, here's the micro theme that I created. What's also nice is as an instructor, if I have made an error here and this actually is not due on Friday and I actually want it due on Sunday, as an instructor, I can click on this and drag it. And I have automatically updated this assignment to be due on Sunday at 5 p.m. It's updated here in the, in the calendar, and when I go back to my course, it'll also be updated there as well. So you'll see now this is due Sunday, January 17th, and the due date is also the 17th on the assignment. So you can see how all of those items are connected together. Any questions so far on anything that I've covered? Okay. Okay, now says that the, the drag and drop did not work for you. Um, the, oh, the drag and drop for the calendar? item. Okay. And are you, are you in a site where you are the instructor? You have the teacher role? Okay. And we can look at that, too, at the end. Yeah, you have to be a teacher. Only teachers can... Um, change the, the due date on any type of assignment that has a due date on it. Okay, any other questions? 
Kelly, Keith, we doing okay? Okay, great. And feel free to stop me if you have questions. So the assignments area um, is where only as the different assignments go. You'll notice down here where quizzes are. This is where you would create quizzes. Um, but these are grayed out. You can make these available to the students so that they can see all that information here. In this class, though, I'll point out that modules is an area where you can actually combine all of this information so that students pretty much progress through all of your site content um, in a linear fashion, and they can get access to everything that is due in each module in one place, rather than having to maybe go to, re go to modules to read, then go to assignments to submit papers, and then go to quizzes to take a test. You can, in modules, set it up by lessons or set it up by chapters or by the week that you're in and have all of that information in here like this. So, for example, lesson one, you'll see these are readings. Um, and then they can jump to a practice quiz um, and then do more readings and then they have their graded quiz. So you can actually put all of that information into the modules area. And that's how this practice site is set up. Um, now, keep in mind, in Blackboard, you can have as many buttons as you want, and a lot of times your main navigation buttons will be um, maybe a button for each lesson. The way that that works inside of Canvas is that um, they're all individual modules. Um, and these modules, you can expand and you can collapse them. You can reorder them if you need to, but they're all going to show up here on the page for all of the students to view. Also, in the modules area, there's not folders. Um, you can indent items so that you can see um, kind of a, a threaded view of how information is connected. Um, but there are no folders. That's another key difference between Blackboard and Canvas. So if I need to add a new top level module here. We can do that here with the add module button. Okay, and let's just call this lesson six. Okay. You can do adaptive release, so if you don't want this module to be available until a certain date, you can do that. You can also set prerequisites, so um, if you want to require that a student has um, received a certain grade on a quiz before they have access to this, you can set prerequisites like that. So when I add my module, it's going to go down here to the bottom, and then to add information to it, it's this plus sign here. And here's where I put in the information. Okay. So if it's a content page, um, external URL, or discussion, I can put all that information in here. And then if I need to, I can indent. Okay. So here's the course files. Let's just see, and I'm just going to pick this one, and I'm not going to indent it, and then you see that it's here, okay? Now notice again, you've got these icons. So by default, it's published. I can unpublish it, um, but the module that I just created is not published. So I need to make sure that this is published as well in order for any of the items inside of this module to be visible. And then if I need to reorder this at all, I can do that here. And then if I need to delete anything, I can do this from the settings icon to delete. Or I can delete an individual item here.
So next I'll go into grades. Now in Blackboard, how you would get to the Grade Center is through the Control Panel and then Grade and View Full Grade Center, I believe. Um, here, since you have a teacher role in your site, you'll click on Grades to get to the Grade Center view. When students click on Grades, they will see only their grades. They will not see a Grade Center view. And this is your Grade Center view. We've got all of the list of students here. Um, the paw print IDs, these are dummy students. And then these are all of the items that I have that are gradable inside of my class. You can sort by column header if you need to. So um, if I need to sort the students, if I need to sort by things that I've graded, I can click on the column header. And you'll see how these are, oops, let me go back. Over on the far right, you'll see my categories that I had set up. Um, and because I'm doing weighted grades, you'll see that 70% um, of the grades, 70% of all assignments, and then quizzes count toward 10%, and then it has the total grade over here. So as I enter that information, it'll all be calculated for me automatically. You'll see that each of the items, you can see that it's out, this one's out of 25. And if I need to see the assignment details, I can go here. Speed graders, where I can go to grade submissions. You can also send messages to students who haven't turned things in or students who um, have maybe missed a due date. So right from the Grade Center, if I want to send one message, an individual message to each of these people, I can do that. You can set a default grade if you need to across all of the, the cells in here. Mute assignment is if you are grading, you're in the process of grading an assignment and you don't want students to individual see, individually see that their grades are appearing. You want all the students to see their grades at the same time. You can mute an assignment so that students don't see them until you've unmuted it. When you do that, um, here you go. you will have an icon here that lets you know that this assignment is muted. I'm trying to click here to unmute the assignment. So if you're, as you're grading, you can go into speed grader. Well, hold on. It's for papers, but for submissions, here we go. Here we go. So here is the quiz that this student took. Um, there are auto-graded quiz questions, as the same as there are in Blackboard. So if you're using um, the multiple choice, multiple answer, true, false, those can be graded for you automatically. You can set what each of the point values are, and you can come in here and see this information. If you need to override certain points, you can do that. You can provide additional comments by question. And then over here, you can assign a grade. You can actually give a comment if you need to. Or if you want to provide audio feedback to that student, you can do that as well. Um, so I could click here. Um, and I could actually record something to, for the student. Mm 
-hmm. It looks like I'm not able to click on that button right now. I'm going to just cancel out of here. But you can add audio or video feedback to the students if you needed to. And then once you're inside of the speed grader view, you can quickly jump um, from student to student or from assignment to assignment once you're in this view. Now, you're not able to add individual columns to the Grade Center directly. Um, like I said, those will need to be added as either assignments with no submission or things that are not graded. Um, if you are going to download your Grade Center and maybe do some calculations offline in Excel, you can export the current Grade Center, make some changes, and then you can import those. Um, but keep in mind, if you create any new columns in that Excel spreadsheet, they will come in, but it will create an assignment for you that is no submission. Okay. Um, any questions so far on the Grade Center? Okay. There are discussion boards inside of Canvas as well. So to create a new forum, we'll come here. So you can add um, as many as you need. The water cooler here, you can reply. Um, and the ones that are current, if you'd like those to be stuck to the top, you can actually move these. The pinned ones will always stay at the top. And then if you would like your students to be able to access a discussion, but you actually want it to be closed for comment so that they can't participate in it, in it anymore, you can drag a discussion down to the closed for comments area. Um, this is a feature that's not available inside of Blackboard. You either have to hide it completely um, or leave it open and ask that they don't participate in it, but you actually can't lock them out. So this is something that, um, this is a feature that you can't find in Blackboard at the time. The pages area in Canvas is a, is a place for you to create your own individual pages. Um, they're, you make them so that they're native HTML pages, and you build them inside of Canvas. Um, some instructors who use uh, a wiki will create a page and allow all of the students in the class or groups of students to participate in it. And a wiki, um, a Canvas page can be a good replacement for the wiki tool that's available inside of Blackboard. So if you needed to add a new page, um, well, actually, I think it would be better if I went into one that was already developed so you could see how it looks. Let's see. So this is the page editor. You'll notice that this area is very similar to what you're used to. Um, and at the bottom, you see where it says options. Only teachers can edit this page. But you can change it so that only teachers and that teachers and students can edit it or anyone. Um, we don't really allow all of our, any of our sites to be publicly available. So the anyone option um, wouldn't be applicable for this use. And this option down here ties into the notifications that I was talking about. If um, you or your students have opted into receiving any type of notification when content has been updated, if you check this box, 
all of the students in the class would receive a notification that this content has changed. The people link is the same as a course student roster in Blackboard. So here you can see the list of everyone who's enrolled in your class and then the role that they have, whether they're a teacher, a TA, or a student. As an instructor, you can also click on each of these users and get some information about their activity um, in your course. So more about this user, notice over here on the side you can see analytics, their interactions with you, and their access report. So here's information specifically on this user. So you can check about their activity, um, if they've communicated with you or any of the, the students in the class. Submissions and then kind of see their grade based on the average for the class or, or if they're an outlier. And when I'm in this view, also notice that I can easily switch between the different um, students that are in the class and then also view their analytics while I'm on this page. So back on um, the people page, for Canvas, um, for your sites, we will enroll all of the students in your course for you. We enroll those students based on the class number that's in MyZoo. Um, and we will continue to add students through the entire add drop period for the semester. If when you're filling out the, the request form, if you put in information about additional TAs that you have, we will also add them. You can add TAs um, or additional people by clicking the Add People button, as long as the person that you're adding already has an account in Canvas. If they don't have an account in Canvas, you'll just get an error message, and you can send an email to canvas at missouri.edu and just let us know who the person is, the role that you want them to have, and the class you want them enrolled in. And we can get them added for you if you're not able to get that person in. If you are doing group work in Canvas, on the people page is also where you would add groups. And here's your tab here. And here's where you can create groups for your students. You can have it so that they Sign, that they sign up or that you um, assign them to groups yourself. Are there any um, questions on anything that I've covered? What I would like to do is open it up for um, any specific questions that any of you may have. Okay, if there's not any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and finalize this training session. If anybody has any questions, feel free to email canvas at missouri.edu and we can um, respond to you there. If you um, have any need to read through any of the Canvas documentation, 
on the bottom left hand side of Canvas. If you're in here, you can search the Canvas Guides. You can also reach the Canvas Guides from the front of courses.missouri.edu, which is here. Okay, I'm going to send this link to you all so that you can check this out if you want to. Okay, everyone, I wanted to thank you for your time. Have a good day.